I'm tucked in, I'm ready to go. This is the exaggeration of the story you heard on Wine About It. I had to make a wedding cake for Atrioc and Ari's wedding. I wanna say like a week or two before their wedding, Ari hit me up and she said, will you make our desserts too? And so they had 150 people going to their wedding. So that meant I needed to make 150 macarons, 150 chocolate chip cookies, 150 snickerdoodles, 150 lemon bars, 150 mousse shots, and I was gonna make 150 fruit tarts, but I didn't do that because I was tired. And so in order to do all of that, I streamed like five days, 12 hours in the kitchen, baking, 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 baking. Something to know about their wedding is that their wedding was two hours away. And so I have to find an Airbnb to stay at because I need a fridge for this wedding cake. I find this Airbnb, it's a thousand dollars a night. They say they have a fridge. I message them, I'm like, hey, I'm making all the desserts for this wedding. I need to make sure your fridge will fit my cake, blah, blah. They're like, oh, great. If you watch any of my streams in July, you saw how much time I spent on this cake. Now, the issue about cakes in the summer is they're most likely to melt. You need to take a cake frozen, otherwise you are going to have a big heaping mess of wedding cake. Here is a perfect example of a cake in the summer that was probably beautiful before this. So you have to deliver them frozen. I get to the Airbnb, I'm on the phone with Rich Campbell, and as I pull up, it's like, the weirdest, it's like tucked back. It's tucked back this Airbnb, it's like a ranch. I'm really confused where to go because there's like, it's like deep down this dirt road. And so I'm on the phone with Rich and I'm like, Rich, I gotta go. And he's rambling about something. I'm like, Rich, I gotta go. I gotta, I gotta figure out where the heck I am. All of a sudden there's this old man outside of my car. And I'm like, whoa. So I rolled down the window and I was like, is this the Airbnb? And he's like, yeah, my name's Leroy. I live upstairs. And I'm like, You're, you seem nice, but you live upstairs at this thousand dollar Airbnb that was supposed to be a private home that I was renting. That's strange. I was like, where should I park? And he's like, I don't know, right there. And I was like, okay. And so I pull in and I like roll up the window and all of a sudden there's this woman outside too. Let's call her freaking Michelle. I get out of the car and Leroy goes upstairs and Michelle, it's like 9 p.m. Michelle's like, do you want me to give you a tour of the house? I'm like, yeah, that'd be great. So she takes me into the house and it's incredibly hot in there. And so I ask her, I said, why is it so hot? And she's like, we only have like air conditioning units. We don't have AC. And I'm like, oh, great. And she's like, no big deal though. We cleaned out the, the fridge for you, but there's no freezer space. Freezer space is more important than anything else for a wedding cake. Whatever, I'll make do. I'm sure I'll be able to use the fridge. However, she said, by the way, don't use this side of the house either because that's our bathroom that we use. And I said, oh, and she goes, we are out in the trailer. So you rent the house out. That's supposed to be a full private house for $1,000 a night. And this is the property. This is the house we're staying in. Here's Leroy upstairs. He's living his best life. Honestly, I'm not even mad at Leroy. Leroy's great. I liked him. She says, don't come anywhere past here because that's where we go to the bathroom. And over here is a sliding glass door. And over here is their trailer. I start unloading stuff and then everybody else gets home from going out for Atriox wedding rehearsal. They all get home at around 9 p.m. So the first thing I do, cause I just drove two hours is put this cake in the fridge. I get it stacked. So I get it straight out of the car and eventually I get it so insanely smooth. Meanwhile, I have Atriox, Stans, Rochelle and Ludwig all in this cute little assembly line working on the cake. And the night before Atriox wedding, they're all filling the macarons. They did a shit job at first, but eventually they did a good job. I'm recording a video to figure out which one should be fired. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> nobody better than picking out two tops. <laughs> Get this guy on grinder, yeah. That's what they were working on while I kept doing the cake. I mix a thousand colors. This is how many colors I thought I was gonna need for this cake. This is what we are going for with the cake. So as you can see, we got the color of the cake itself great, but we needed to get this petal texture. I'm working on the petal texture and this is the closest I am getting. I keep scraping it off and starting over. I keep scraping off, starting over, scraping off, starting over. These are just more fine and it's like mine are like melting. I find the person who made the original cake and I go to their website and they have some, they have some classes. So I buy their classes and I try to take some of their online courses, but they don't go over this cake. I find one video of them making this cake. It shows the same piping tip that I'm using and it's a, a sped up 10 second TikTok. So I can't figure out how they are doing it. And it is the first time in my life that I cannot figure out a cake and I have to keep scraping it all off and starting over. And I do more research and look, I find two other knockoffs. This is how much research I did that clearly tried to make that cake and they couldn't figure it out. And this one whose petals were more similar to mine, clearly a knockoff, but couldn't figure out how to do it. 
I didn't like either of those. I wanted this. I'm doing every tutorial. I'm doing every technique I've ever learned and I cannot figure out this pattern. And it is four in the morning and I am sobbing at this point. I've spent five days, 12 hours every single day working on this. People come into my chat all the time and they're like, what's your worst wedding cake story? This is it. This is the story. Ask for help from someone. Who am I getting help for at four in the morning that knows wedding cakes better than I do in a house of Stans, Atrioc, Rochelle, and Ludwig? I am the help. And then finally, I come to the conclusion at around 4 a.m. that I just need to scrape it off and come up with a new game plan that I cannot make that cake. I send Ari a bunch of pictures of cakes and I tell her to pick out one she likes and I'll just go with it. I wake up at 8 a.m. and I call all the florists in the area. I need flowers for my cake. This cake is gonna need some fucking flesh flowers to hide some shit because it is ugly as hell. I spend $300 on flowers. I don't know what's gonna look good on this cake because this cake has driven me to absolute insanity at this point. I thought pinks and peaches were the wedding colors. So if you look at this and this, we're in the same color palette. It felt too stiff to me, so I hurry and added some texture. I freaking love, I love having textured cakes. But the issue was, as soon as I held my flowers up to this cake, it no longer looked like elegant and pretty. It was giving me Hobby Lobby. So then I smoothed it. Again, I got rid of the texture, but then I held the flower up to it and it looked more Hobby Lobby. So I, I gave the texture back. Maybe I just need to arrange the flowers differently. This looks like Hobby Lobby. I think I just bought all the wrong flowers. I think I needed all white flowers because of the mint green. Because the mint green with the pink was just giving me like, so tacky. Like all of a sudden, it was giving me like baby shower. So I needed to get the cake over there at one o'clock. It is now 11 a.m. So I go back to the florist, spend another $200 on all white flowers. And I, I try assembling the white flowers because there's a hundred thousand different ways to assemble flowers on a cake. And I'm just trying to map out. I was like, okay, what if I do a cluster here, a cluster here, a cluster here, a cluster here. And then I was like, what if I do something where all the flowers are on the top and they're kind of cascading down. And I was like, I don't like that either. Then I'm out of time and I give up because it is now one o'clock and I need to be at the wedding venue. The wedding starts at four. I give up and I say to myself, well, the floors probably has some flowers that I could use and I'm just gonna get the cake there and then I am going to beg the florist for some help. We're in the back of a car, the cake is just dripping. The frosting is just melting off. And I say to myself, this is nice, smiley face. I love this. I go to the person who runs the venue, we'll call her Billy. Billy, can I use your fridge? She's like, Yes, because the whole bottom of the cake now, frosting was melting off like chunks of the iceberg. It'll crack and then just a whole chunk will fall off. I take it in the fridge, I leave it in the fridge. Meanwhile, I unload everything else because I also made the dessert table. So I had to get the dessert table set up. As I walk in, the florist comes up to me and she's like, oh, you're the cake girl. And I'm like, yeah. And I'm like, really, I'm like so excited because she seems nice. And she goes, do you need cake flowers? And I was like, you do not understand how badly I need cake flowers. So I start explaining to her, I'm like, the cake is a mess. Like I'm gonna need a lot of help. And she's like, are you gonna do them or am I gonna do them? And I was like, I really think it'll be like a collaborative effort because I need a lot of help on this. And she's like, well, I'm not just gonna stand there while you do them. And I was like, no, 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 you could, you could totally do them. I, I just need flowers and I genuinely, I just need help. She goes, well, I don't have flowers for you. And I'm like, you just told me you had flowers for me. That's fine, I completely understand. Uh, maybe you have like one or two because I brought my own flowers that I can use for filler. And she's like, yeah, maybe I have one or two, but I'm not gonna give you all my flowers for your cake. And I was like, that's totally fine. I completely understand that. I brought my own flowers for the cake and I'm just hoping maybe you have one or two since she freaking offered. I'm like, what is going on? None of my flowers match the wedding. Cause I walk into the wedding and I see this wedding and it's wildflowers, which I looked at the inspiration cake, it was all pinks. You walk in, there's yellows and purple and green. And I'm like, if I would have known the colors, I would have been, I would have saved myself so much time. I go and I set up the dessert table, which here's a little picture of the dessert table. It turned out great. We made all these desserts on stream. Do you guys remember? We've got our snickerdoodles, our chocolate chip cookies, our lemon bars, our macarons, our moose shots. And they were gone in seconds, chat. Like everybody ate all the desserts. They were completely gone. The florist is just like, so freaking mean, you know? I'm like, whatever, I get the dessert table all set up. I bring in my bucket of flowers into the kitchen. Right outside the kitchen, this is the kitchen, is this little closet and that's where the florist was working. So this is an open door. My cake is in a fridge right here. I'm walking like right over here. And I stand there and I think to myself, we probably can't have 
flowers in the kitchen. So I lean over with my bucket of flowers and I said, hey, could I set my flowers in here? It looked like I just offended her entire family. She audibly gasps and she says, what are you doing with those in here? And I said, these are the flowers I brought for my cake. She said, I am the flower vendor. You cannot bring flowers in here. And I said, I told you about these flowers. They're for my cake. I need flowers for my cake. And she said, I don't care. That's against the rules. I'm the flower vendor. You are not allowed to bring flowers in here. And I said, I really just needed somewhere to set them. And she said, you need to set them by your cake. My cake is in the fridge right here. So I thought it would be okay to put them in here. She's like, well, you can't have flowers in the kitchen. Yes, I figured as so which is why I asked if they could come in here. I said they are treated because sometimes florists get worried about treated because if my flowers weren't treated the same way as hers, what could happen is mine could have bugs and then hers could get like a bunch of bugs in them and blah, 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 blah. And my flowers are treated. I just wanted to set them here. I won't put them here. And she said, well, you need to get them out of the kitchen too. Where should I put them? And she said, you need to put them out by the cake. I said, the cake's in the fridge. She said, you need to put them out where the cake goes. So all the way out here is the table that my cake went on. So I go and I put my little bucket of flowers right here next to it. I pull the cake out on the counter because I have to refrost the entire thing. Remember, it's melted. I have to refrost the entire thing. As I'm doing that, she comes walking out and she goes, oh, sweetheart, that cake is a mess. I'm so sorry. I said, yep, I'm just doing my best. She, then she comes back in. When she comes back in the second time, she's like, I'm sorry about the flower thing. You just really shouldn't be bringing flowers in here. I said, got it. I just needed flowers for my cake. I'm going to throw hands. I'm going to hurt this woman. And then freaking floral lady, whose name I didn't get. She's like, Billy, come here. Billy come, walks in here, which I am right over here dealing with frosting my cake. And she starts complaining to Billy about me who is standing right here. I almost lost my goddamn mind. But I'm like, it's Atriox and Ari's wedding. I'm not going to cause a problem. I'm not going to cause a problem. She's like, you know, she tried to bring flowers in here. She really shouldn't be doing that. I know you haven't worked here very long, Billy, but that's really against the rules. If you would have just given me two fucking flowers, I wouldn't have brought the flowers in here. If you could have just spared two fucking flowers. Guys, there was a swing outside of their wedding, a swing that she covered in flowers. You're telling me you couldn't have given me two of those flowers? Because let me tell you what, no one fucking cared about those flowers. You could have given me two of those flowers, you bitch. She was awful. She was the worst person I've ever met. I'm not kidding. She sucks. I brought a, a special linen for this table because I wanted the cake to look nice. And so I got a nice velvet linen and Billy comes to me and Billy's like, that cake is too, that table's too tall for Ari. Ari won't be able to cut the cake. And I was like, Billy, it's a cocktail table. Guys, this is a cocktail table. This is the size of table you go to any place like a bar height. It's a very normal size table. Like it goes to like my belly button. She's like, we really need to put it on the dessert table. She wanted to put the wedding cake right here where the macarons are. And I was like, absolutely not. I was like, it's gonna go on its own table. It looks nicer that way. And she like argues with me, argues. She's like, Ari's not gonna be able to reach. And I was like, I have done 5,000 wedding cakes. She will be able to reach. I have worked with brides that are shorter. She will be able to reach. Holy shit. Finally, I decorate the cake. I put flowers on it. I'm like near tears. It is three o'clock. The wedding starts at four o'clock. There are already guests showing up. These are my flowers. This is what I could do with my flowers. It doesn't match any of the other flowers. And so I go over to the centerpiece and I yoink this little it's called a panda bear an enema, an enema. I steal that out so it matches a little bit and I say, okay, that's all I can do. I'm like, I clearly can't do more. If you look closely, I put little, cause Ari likes bugs. So I put little white chocolate bumblebees covered in gold. We have gold leaf. I, I was able to refrost the whole thing. It's on its own table. And I'm like, that's the best I can do. So I, I run back to the Airbnb. I have 15 minutes before the wedding starts. I hurry and change guys. I haven't showered. I haven't done anything. I set a timer for like five minutes. I shower and I change and I get back there. I do all my makeup. I get that back there by four. That's pretty impressive. Also, I have a wonky eye. I don't know when I developed this, but I do. And it makes me sad. The florist is still running around. The wedding starts. It's beautiful. Ari has some of the most beautiful vows I've ever heard in my life. I have heard so many vows and I've never heard vows better than Ari's. Dinner starts. Everyone goes in and sits at their table. Nothing is going on. Everyone's like, everyone's like eating their salads. And I'm looking around and I'm seeing all of these flowers. So many flowers. See these colors? They're just different than mine. Mine has no purple. Mine has no yellow. I'm sad. And I'm sitting there and I say to my table of Stans and Rochelle and Lud, should I just take some of these flowers because the florist is gone? Should I just, should I just, you some and everyone on the table after everything i've been through they're like yes queen do it and i'm like okay so i go over to the cake table and i slowly add one of the flowers in. i stole a purple flower from our table and i th throw it in there and then next to me is atriox family and they're looking at me like mortified they're like uh 
what are you doing to the cake? I was like, oh my God, I made the cake. The florist was really mean to me. Wouldn't let me use any of the flowers and I don't like the way it looks and I just really want to fix it. And they're like, oh my God, take our flowers. We'll help. They're like, what about this one? This one's really pretty. Like, what about this one? What about this one? It's like Atriox's family is in on it and they're giving me flowers and I'm implanting them and I get it all fixed. I'm a little sad because since I added the gold leaf and stuff early and I did it with my arrangement, you can't really see the gold leaf with the new arrangement. But once I got their flowers added, oh, so much better. So much better. It matches the wedding. It looks so much better. So I fixed it. I got it to match the goal versus what we got is incredibly defeating, but it's fine. It's good enough. It's time to cut the cake. And Billy comes up to me. She's like, hey, it's time to cut the cake. Uh, we're going to move it onto a lower table. And I said, why? And she's like, Ari's not going to be able to reach it. And I said, she will be able to reach it. Do not move this cake. This cake has been melting all day. Do not move this cake. And I go to find something. I don't remember what I was going to do. I was going to find Ludwig or something. I turn around and they are moving the cake. It's fine that they moved the cake, but it was just like such a frustrating situation to end the day that I turn back around and her and the photographer are moving the cake after I specifically asked them not to. It was just crazy. It was crazy, it was crazy, it was crazy. It turned out beautiful, it turned out fine, it tasted amazing. Ari comes to me at the end, she's like, the cake was beautiful, the food was amazing, you're great, thank you so much. I'm like, dude, your florist was a bitch. And she was like, yeah, she was a bitch. And I was like, what happened? And she was like, Ari said, I asked the florist for peonies and the florist said to me, I don't like taking recommendations from my clients. What? I, again, I'm not someone who leaves reviews, but I was so tempted to ask for who the florist was to leave her a scathing review because I have never worked with someone so mean. I get back to the Airbnb, we get everything checked out, leave the Airbnb, the Airbnb people start texting me. They're like, hey, do you want to leave us a good rate, a review? And I'm like, no, I'm just like, oh, not really. I don't really leave reviews. And they keep texting me, they keep bothering me. Finally, I tell them, I say, listen, I'm not gonna leave your review because the house had no air conditioning. It was a shared house. The curtains were see-through. There was no privacy because you guys were out in a trailer the whole time. You don't want me to leave a review. You don't want me to do that. I think you should work on some things before you rent this out to people. Cause I don't want to ruin their business by leaving them a bad review. I, I'm not doing that. Then two days later, I get a email from Airbnb saying that they are charging me for damages on the property. They said we stole a pillow. They said we broke a mirror and that we left a water bottle on the couch causing water damage. I had to reply to Airbnb and say, so these guys wanted me to leave them a five-star review. They said they were gonna leave me a five-star review. All of this changed once I told them that I wasn't gonna leave a review. Here's the screenshots, blah, blah, blah. We definitely did not break anything. We were barely even in the house. I would never steal a pillow. And they haven't gotten back to me yet. They said they're doing more investigating, but yeah, that is the story of Atriox Wedding Cake.